that's going to be said on this live. It'll be, here's Jeff's 30 second story about his grandmother's boobs. Like, that <laughs> I think and it's it's entirely true. So like, so uh, my logo is a butt, right? Like it's just, it's a thing. It's cool. It was by accident. Everybody loves it. It's super fun. Um, my grandmother wanted to paint something for the office. And I was like, grandma, that'd be awesome. I'd be super happy to have you paint something for the office. I want to let you know that uh, my logo is a butt. So she'd do something like similar. She goes, I know what to get you. I said, okay. <laughs> so like my grandmother signs up for this painting class. And I don't hear anything for like three weeks. I get a Facebook message saying, Jeffrey, your painting has arrived. I was like, great. So I open it up and I'm FaceTiming my grandmother. And she's like, she's weird about like, she's not gross, but she's perverted because she's old and it's cute type thing. And <laughs> Jeffrey, I want to let you know before you open this, that I had people from the class uh, model uh, this fruit bowl. And I was like, why would you have people model fruit? That makes no sense. I think of like fruit of the loom guy or something like that. And she's like, you'll, you'll understand what happens and you'll see it. And I was like, okay. So my grandmother uh, painted a fruit bowl uh, modeled by 90 year old woman in her class. And you'll notice that there they are. You can see the fruit. Um, that is, that is a fruit bowl. And you cannot tell me any different because I cannot imagine my perverted grandmother being 95 and asking women in her class to model for her son's fruit bowl. But that's what happened. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Um, and there, now I, I can't run ads anymore, but you know I, what I, mean. I, I I only see three nipples. Yeah, there's so, there's four under the did weight. Did you get a model and a half? Or? I, I, I think what happened is, and I, I just imagining the scenario is very uncomfortable, but I'm pretty sure she went up to all the other perverted grandmothers and said, I want to play a prank on my son or my grandson who has this show and he's going to put this on the wall behind the show. Could you, you know, I, and I was like, oh, I don't want to put that in my head, but but that's my grandmother's and somebody comments, uh, Nana's melons. And I was like, <laughs> accurate. It's, it's my grandmother's boobs. Um, so yeah, between the butts and the boobs and, and it's, it's one hell of a good time. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, just hitting all the body parts. It's, it's a very strange time in my life because yeah. I'm 35 and I shouldn't be talking about this, but I definitely am. Um, <laughs> And managed to build like a real Facebook group and a real tribe and a real brand around two cheeks and a series of, of cornucopia of nipples. Thank you, Grandma. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> so 2020 is the year of genitalia, I think. I, I think that's what's going to happen. And like, you know what? Facebook ads be damned. Organic is where it's at. You don't have to run ads for anything. Proof. I can't even run ads, right? <laughs> All my lunch and learns literally have just a big box of boobs at the top of the thing. Um, so <laughs> it's just when you're, you're making a video there, you just have to blur out like the top of your shelf. <laughs> okay. No. So this is what happened. So we actually like, all right, we ran ads for the black Friday special and it worked really, really well. And like 10 seconds in like to the ad, like the, the camera's like right here, I'm holding it, I'm talking and then I change it like this. And so there's like a flash of tits just like for like three seconds, I go like right <laughs> in the back. Like it, it must have like totally like skipped or like somebody looked at it was like, there's no way those are boobs. There must be fruit. <laughs> so like, fruit bowl. it's a fruit bowl. What are you talking about? Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I definitely did think about like, just like blurring the top shelf. <laughs> and I didn't realize that until after the ads were up and running and they were working. But uh, yeah, man, it's. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's hilarious. That was your Christmas gift. That was my Christmas gift for my Jewish grandmother. Wow. And it's a fruit bowl, and nobody can tell me different. <laughs> oh, that's so definitely awesome. Tits, definitely tits. What a great way to start the first episode. Of <laughs> Just talking about your grandma's boobs. Thank that, you. That's how we wanted to introduce everybody to a new genre. <laughs> Telling a story about your grandma's boobs. Yeah, that's how I we're going to start. I don't think anyone coming up next could ever beat that intro. <laughs> like, Rob's going to be like, let me tell you about how I worked out and got ripped. Mm -mm, Rob, not even, close. not even close. Just just one person watching. And I, dude, we've got so many comments here. That's so funny. Uh, Jeff's titty, titty ad strategy. I like yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I figured out a TNA, right? So like, uh, like that acronym for like a new elite program, right? Like we've got the butt group, right? We've got the inner circle and now we need TNA. So like. 
you know, traffic and ads or something like that. We'll have to figure that out. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now all your graphic design has to have like, it doesn't, it has nipples, but you can't really tell that it's nipples. We like, have to find that in, in any like ASCON paraphernalia, there always has to be some type of like, like yeah. It's borderline. Is it is it boobs or is it butt? Like, yeah, is it one of those things? Is it a moon? I'm not really sure what's happening, but mm -hmm. yeah, we're gonna figure that out. But I'm super psyched to be on the show. It's been a long time coming. I'm so happy I paid you money so many years ago, and and here we are. So yay! Thank you for paying me money. And you were actually one of the first interviews that I ever did in this Facebook group when we first started out. Yep. Um, and it's been a crazy journey since then. Just update everybody here on what that journey has been like over the past two, two and a half years. It's been it's been really strange and gone in three phases. The first is like proving it to myself in the universe that somebody can pay me money. I'm deserving of money and deserving of attention because up to that point, like like you don't exercise that part of your brain. Like you just aren't comfortable with saying it costs money. You always want to do a favor for somebody and you realize that they don't value it and it defaults like, okay, fine, we'll be friends. Like it's a very uncomfortable, unclear area. And, and the first phase of my journey is being comfortable with somebody paying me money. And what's interesting is that always comes up at a new price point, whether it's like a thousand, uh, 5,000 or even my new 30 K program. Like it's always like this phase of like, am I worth it always? Right. And getting really, really good at, at understanding that and, and telling you right into STFU. Right, mm -hmm. and just being comfortable with people paying you money. That was the first phase. I think that was where you and I both got started on our journeys and Facebook ads and agencies being able to charge people money and stuff like that. That was like, that was the first phase of my brain saying, oh my God, it's possible. And I think like, it was the first 10K month was the best month ever of my whole life, right? Like, <laughs> like I could yeah. do it. I was rich as hell. Nobody could tell me I was wrong. It all went to hell after, but like. You create your new normal. And then when you get a 10K month now, you're like, Fuck, I'm broke. <laughs> oh God, this yeah. is disgusting. What am I doing with my life? But <laughs> that that first chunk, and I think the 10K mark is where you can realize people can pay you money, you can deliver service, people are happy with it. And and you know, a, a Nick Corum really brought up something interesting at my most recent mastermind, which you helped me plan, which was like this really cool uh, distribution curve. Like you're always gonna be in the middle and, and only half of your clients will ever exist here and half of those are gonna suck, like no matter what. Mm -hmm. And you don't think of that at the 10K level, you think your clients are amazing and they're always gonna do great and you're gonna help them. You don't think like, you know, 67% of time your clients will always suck, like a deviation curve, right? That mm -hmm. was really like stage two, which is realizing like, my clients are big botch liars, right? Like they say they do stuff they don't really, it's just a human thing and being comfortable. You're talking about the agency side, right? Mainly, right. mainly, right. yeah. Agency yeah. side, which is like, I generated 30, 50, or 100 customer opportunities a month. You said you called out all of them. You did not, and I have proof. And that's really been like my outward communication with my clients, which is like, I have proof you didn't call any of your leads back. Yes, you will be renewing. And yes, I'm going to charge you more because I'm in charge of this relationship, not you. And really moving from 10K to 30K is like productizing. I think it's the right term. Like, this is what I do. This is what I don't do. This is what I stand for, what I'm okay with, what I'm not, not okay with. Like sub 10K is, is I can charge people money and we're gonna do stuff together. Between 10 and 30K a month is like, this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm not doing, and I can prove you wrong. I think that's been unique to my journey, but it's been really, really important for my brain to know that the car I delivered works. My client says it doesn't, I test drove it in front of them and nothing was wrong. Like mm -hmm. that really, really worked for me. So for anybody watching, if like, if you happen to run a Facebook ad agency or go on my path, that was like the defining moment of like, you said it didn't work, but I tested it and it worked. Is it you or is it me or is it my product? And 99% mm -hmm. of the time, like it's from the agency side, your clients are, are in that middle 67% of like, they're always going to be bad. Um, and then the third phase is like absolutely nuts. Like redefining your product, like the problem, the process, the promise. I finally got those three P's right spontaneously. Right. <laughs> um, like, uh, creating a course that scales so that everybody can listen to you and you don't have to repeat yourself, mm -hmm. uh, building tribe, community, all that fun stuff. And, and you came around, I, I think you flew down from Ohio during winter or something like that, yeah. and it was between the second and third phase. Like I would have been- January of 2018. Yeah. Something like that. Ago, yeah. And I think you were like really uncomfortable with the idea of meeting a random stranger on the internet. 
And then I had an office in the back. You're like, what am I agreeing to? And you couldn't find your way out or you're stuck. You know what I mean? You're like, <laughs> it's a maze getting to your office. It's, it it's scary. <laughs> it's three separate buildings separated by an alleyway that's made into an alley, right? Like or a hallway, it, like it doesn't work. Um, but ever since then, it's been here and transitioning from phase two to phase three really requires mentorship and accountability that you can't get from yourself. Like no quarterback becomes a quarterback without a coach. It just ain't going to happen. Um, mm -hmm. And I was fortunate enough for you to like yell at me for 45 minutes. And you're like, Jeff, yes, you can. I was like, no, I can't. You're like, yes, you can. I was like, no, I can't. You're like, yes, you can. I was like, fine. And then I remember like I wrote out like 90 headlines of everything that I could communicate that people were missing that I just thought was like, of course you should do this, but nobody was doing it. Like sneaky surveys, welcome text, customer research, like angling your sales pitch correctly. Nobody was doing that. Um, and you really helped me go from phase two to phase three. And I mean, I, I, I don't know if you're comfortable with me saying the numbers, but I'm like this close to having a dot on my stripe instead of a comma. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. 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 Um, and you, you, the, you created a more leveraged offer that way. Um, Correct. Correct. By creating the course started with, start with a course, a beta launch on your personal profile before yep. you even opened up your group. I Correct. think, I think you got like 300 comments or something. It was, launch. it was so strange because I really approached the, 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 the course and the community the culture that I bought into. I, I treat that like my boss at Intel because that's the only way I knew, right? Like mm -hmm. so every week you have to go and what did you do? What do you need help with? What do you suck at? And I did that every single week or every other week. And I remember I lived on the beach and I had no money. I was paying $1,200 a month in rent. I probably couldn't afford it, but I couldn't live in my parents' house anymore. Like, like I couldn't be a 33 year old failure <laughs> route, right? And most people don't believe this. Like I literally was fired three times in nine months from the only real job I ever had. Nobody believes me, right? But I say it every effing day because like the biggest reason people are not more successful with tribe of buyers or leveraged offers, something like that is because they're so used to failing that they don't know how to succeed. Mm. I want people to know, like, I get that. I understand that I've been there. And every single day I'm reminded because like now I live like in a building that's too expensive and I can easily afford it. But I remember like being in Starbucks and having like a 14 hour work day and my eyes were bloodshot and everything was horrible. And I made like a thousand dollars that day. I was like, holy shit, this is mind blowing. What am I supposed to do now? And I would go to Starbucks and I write out that post treating my community like a boss. Like I had to go and I had to support. And for people who aren't making progress, you should treat a group of people the same way because it got to a point where if I didn't post, people were saying, yo, Jeff, what's going on? And you will not, you will not hide from that ever because you've got a hundred people saying what happened. Mm -hmm. And you really need that level of accountability. And every single day you'll be reminded of like, all right, what did I do today? And is that worth posting? on my Friday update. And mm -hmm. that'll, that'll get rid of like getting stuck in the weeds really darn fast. Like, like you won't spend 30 minutes trying to figure out your active campaign anymore. You're just gonna send it. And, and you know what, maybe somebody got two messages, it doesn't matter. Like nobody's gonna hype, like, like hate you for that. You send mm -hmm. it out, you get an offer. And I was so afraid of, of, of failing in front of 100 people that I didn't dare fail. Mm -hmm. I said, the only option I have is to succeed. Um, and so I started posting there. Uh, I developed a huge following uh, people that are like Jeff has uh, identified a problem and is providing a process and a promise to solve it. Nobody was proving their leads are legit. Nobody was doing sneaky surveys and welcome tech soap opera secrets is calling back their leads. And like I literally had a CEO surgeon, MD, MBA that somehow paid me $4,000 a month. I don't know how. Like mm -hmm. I just don't get it. Like he thought I was a PR company. So he was comparing mm -hmm. me to 30K a month and it was like $4,000 a month is a deal. I was like, great, right? And so he me the first month, says everything sucks, says, that, Jeff, I can't believe I paid you money. This was a waste. Leaves me a voicemail. So I literally just record a video, like TV style, YouTube style of me calling back the leads on camera using a script saying, hey, my name is Jeff. I'm with Blank Blank and Company. I just want to make sure somebody called you back and you're taken care of. Nope, nobody called me back. And I sent him that video. And he called me back and just apologized through and through like three minutes long. I saved it, it's in my course, right? And that like interaction with a large tribe allowed me to have the confidence to launch my program on my personal page. Like mm -hmm. if I didn't have that constant back and forth of like, what's your problem, can I solve it? Like 
they're called strategy sessions. I didn't know that's what they were called, right? Mm -hmm. But when somebody had a problem, I would try to answer on the thread. If it didn't work, uh, Zoom call, let's go. And I realized that there's a huge problem in the market. And for everybody watching this, like, if you aren't connected to your why, or if you feel disillusioned, have more strategy sessions. Like, mm -hmm. hey, what's problem? let's get on a call, spend 15 minutes. If I can identify it, I can probably solve it. User slides and you can come out with a mini product or a mini course or just add that to your course. The person will love it because you identify their problem. You can personally test it. And now that adds to your offering and more people will, will be appreciative of the fact that you figured it out forever. Like nobody will ever have that problem ever again. Um, and it was a combination of going to where my tribe is, updating them, having strategy sessions and launching in. And when I launched, I remember having such aversion to that fear of failure again that you're like, Jeff, just turn it on and just use a picture of you parasailing. I was like, that doesn't make any sense. It's like, it doesn't matter. Just use a picture of parasailing. And, and the launch post was non-perfect, but good enough. And I was so afraid of it that I, I closed the laptop right after I pushed post. Like I was just afraid of failing again. Like I had this emotional, like, like brain trash moment. And mm -hmm. I, I pushed post and I closed the laptop. And like, I was nearly crying because of the forced transformation, just like after my elite program or my elite uh, in-person mastermind, like I yeah. broke down in the shower. Like I just couldn't deal with it. Like there's too much weight on my shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, and I posted it and the morning I woke up, we had like 150 people saying I'm in. I was like, holy shit. Like once again, I was afraid of going out on a limb and I proved to myself and the universe proved that like if you take those steps, you're not going to fail. Like you may not succeed, but you won't fail. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I made up the 150, but it felt like a million people said yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then I followed your processes and then it's like, great, let's get on a phone call. What's up? And I remember Jenna Castro Casbon, who will always have a place in my heart. Like she was like, Jeff, I've been following you forever. Here's the card. Let's go. Just like that. <laughs> I had never had anybody treat me like that before. It's like, I'm so confident in what you're doing and how you're doing it, that here's money. I worked hard for this and it's yours. And she's been in the IC ever since. She still comes on and watches the master classes every now and then. It's been, awesome, yeah. yeah, it's been mind blowing. Um, yeah. and, and the reason why I bring up that story is because very often people will go out on a limb afraid of failing. And it's like if you do the pre-work or your pre-group or you mm -hmm. like keep yourself accountable, it's really, mm -hmm. really hard to fail. Like, like if you've run your routes, if you've gone to the gym 50 times, the 51st time will be no different than your last 49. Right. Mm -hmm. It's about getting that 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 process in place and the accountability and the mentorship so that you're doing it again and again and again. By the time you do the play, by the time you go to the meet, by the time you're actually in the Super Bowl, it's the same before. And you don't have that nervousness. And very often people forget about this part of like the iceberg. Right. And we're mm -hmm. looking at the top. And so people will follow me and ask me questions like, how did you launch your inner circle the first time? And it was the best. So I was like, because it wasn't my first time because mm -hmm. I spent hundreds of hours talking to people, identifying a problem, having a real conversation, then happened to be inside of the IC. That, so. That's the big thing. You were so committed to serving with showing up in front of your audience every single day and yep. getting feedback from them and doing those strategy sessions that there was so much equity built up with your audience that when you provided an offer in front of them, it was kind of hard to resist because yep. they had already gotten so much value from it. Everyone is so afraid of being screwed and being taken advantage of, and they're so fearful. That way, when they run into somebody who's like, I won't do that to you, it's just so much easier to facilitate a dollar-driven relationship. Like, like mm -hmm. if you spend money with me, you're going to be good. Like, mm -hmm. the bank for the buck is there. You're going to have a great time. And you can see, like, on my personal page, I've done, like, these mini master classes where I just went live. Like, I just went live, and you can see how I interact and how I have conversations with people that are part of my free tribe, that when you pay me money, it only gets even better. Mm -hmm. um, and so like, yeah, it's called equity or maybe it's called trust or maybe it's like KLT, no like trust. Yeah. But like, I really want to send a signal to the universe. And I think you identify this with this, which is like, sometimes you pay money and you just get screwed like hard. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to make sure I never did that to anybody ever again. And like, I have people paying me between $30,000 a year and 50 bucks. I always make sure that they get what they paid for. Mm -hmm. I always make sure that they're taken care of. And I think that's fundamentally why people are comfortable taking their hard earned money and betting on me and using that to bet on themselves because they know I won't screw them. 
and you and I have been screwed a couple times, right? Like yeah. by the same people, by different people. Like mm -hmm. that sucks. Like the hurt of the hurt hurts more than the good of the good feeling, right? Yeah. And I, I really think for everybody on this call, as long as you don't do this part, like this is gonna be so much better. And it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to say, you know, this isn't working out. It's okay to say, I'm gonna make you whole. But like, as long as you don't do this, your base is gonna take you all the way through the roof. And that's what mm -hmm. happened. Yeah, and that's sustainable. There are so many people out there that are creating cheap programs yep. um, that do not produce a result. And they may be they're, they're making money now, but like this this game is only gonna get harder and harder um, yep. as as everybody grows. Um, so yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. What else did you want to go over today? I don't know. That was that was a really good start. We're done. See you later. Bye. We yeah. Talked about uh, grandma's boobs, uh, yep. and then we got into your story. Um, yep. What? Uh, what I'd love to go into is kind of taking a step back to something that you were saying earlier is, is, is proving to your brain that you could sell at each price point. Yeah. Um, and you launched your beta, you proved yourself that you could sell at that pro price point. You launched your uh, mid tier program, yep. proved it to your brain. Um, and then your high ticket most recently. Yep. Um, so tell us about that experience and kind of the emotion behind it and all that. And so most of my life has been a long series of failures by intermittent success. Like, like I, I don't know how to consistently win, like uh, speaking of my past, right? Not anymore, but like my past 33 years, it's always been like, I fail, I fail, I fail. Oops, I won on a Tuesday. Fail, I fail, I fail. Oops, I won on a Friday, right? And so like, for me to, to get to where I want to go and transform correctly, I needed to remove the failures and only have successes. And to do that, I had to practice. I had to have the right mentors. I had to, to, to ace the test before it happened. I had to do a lot of things right. And some of that involves saying, look, Mr. Johnson, I want to let you know, I think I can solve your problem. Um, and the challenge is that like, I can't do it for free. So what I want you to do is I want you to pay me so I can pay my team at the cost so that that way I can make sure you're taken care of. I make no money on this deal, but I just need to know if you're in. And it's only gonna cost you 97 bucks we can have, have it up and running tomorrow. That removed the fear of failure for me. And that made it easy. And like that script is what got me through each price point. Like whether it was just 97 bucks, like, mm -hmm. like you know, I'd be happy to set this up on your personal page and, and you know, I, I could do it for you, but honestly, Mr. Johnson, if I have to pay my staff, I have to charge you. Are you okay with a nominal fee of $97? I use that at the beginning of my agency to prove that I could have a sales conversation. I never mm -hmm. recommend somebody start at 97, but I had I was so used to failing that mm -hmm. I didn't want to fail anymore. And that brought down my okay number from a thousand to 97 or a hundred bucks, right? Mm -hmm. What's interesting is with that phrasing, people started saying yes. And so when somebody said, Jeff, can you fix my website? I use that phrase a lot. And I started charging a hundred bucks for a job. It would take me four hours. I probably would have done it if they asked politely. I was so desperate need for validation, I probably would have done it for free. But I couldn't pay my rent with free help, right? Mm -hmm. I couldn't pay for food with favors. The mortgage mm -hmm. ain't, or the bank ain't taking that guy's word, right? So I needed to make money and I needed to find this like weird path, right? So I used that in the beginning. And what happened is I kind of advanced that script and I just overstacked with value. I think you've seen my wallet out campaign or the whiteboard, the seven steps and all that. Yeah. And so I started saying, hey, Mr. Johnson, if you like, I can show you how a wallet out campaign works. It's kind of behind the scenes. You know, people are charging five thousand dollars for this. I can't charge you a thousand. I can't charge you five, but I can run this for you if you'd like. I just have to pay my team nine hundred ninety seven dollars. You OK with that? Uh, I'm not sure, but I'll take a look. And then they would sign up for nine hundred ninety seven dollars. And it just kind of like got higher up and higher up and higher up. And the weirdest part is that like, I considered it in my brain a favor when I said it was 5,000, but you just got to pay my staff. I was the staff, right? Like mm -hmm. it was a lie to get around my brain bullshit and mm -hmm. kind of break my brain and realize, oh my God, this guy definitely paid me money. Like, mm -hmm. holy shit, this is nuts. And it got to a point where I had enough people, enough of those conversations at Chamber of Commerce, BNI, like everybody I could talk to, I did a breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Like I just needed more people asking me like that was my prospecting engine and then like people would say that i'd use that script and people started paying me money it was the weirdest feeling in the world because honestly like 
I was going on Upwork or Theme Forest, and I could find this theme for like 49 bucks. How could I dare charge them 500? That's how my brain worked, right? Like mm. I must be lying or cheating or stealing. Like this is fundamentally unfair. And mm. I'd run into people like Nick Robbins, who you know, or Sema or John Logar and, and people that were in our same cohort in the beginning. And they're saying, yeah, that's how that works. Like a carpenter will go to Home Depot, buy a $10 screw and sell it to you for a hundred bucks. And the difference is his brain power his expertise in making sure that you're taken care of. And mm -hmm. I look at like surgeons, like high tier plastic surgeons. They're charging like $3,000 an hour and the scalpel is 30 bucks. Mm -hmm. like what's the difference? The difference in, in that middle 90% their product margin is their expertise in knowing what to do and how to do it. And I think Thomas Edison is like a great quote. It's like he sent an invoice for a thousand bucks. The screw was, a thousand, was $1 and where to put it was 999, right? Like that made me realize that like people were comfortable not paying for product, but for paying for process and expertise and make sure they're taken care of. Mm -hmm. And so at this point in my agency, somebody spent $2,000 on a website. I'd say, look, you're going to talk to me. I'm going to make sure you're taking care of, pick up your phone call and stuff. I don't recommend that one-on-one -on -one style anymore, but that's what broke my brain. Cause then I could say for like for $2,000, you're going to get account manager. This is all the stuff they're like, okay, great. And at each price point, my brain again, went on a limb and it didn't fail because I had done my homework beforehand. I looked mm -hmm. at the prices elsewhere. I had submitted bids as a fake company to other places. I had called other shops. So like I knew that like, look, Mr. Johnson, you go down the street and they charge you $50,000 for this program. Um, all I have to do is pay my staff of a thousand. What do you say? And that got me to, I think like $30,000 a month. Um, using that type of thinking, the 997 for the inner circle, was entirely different. Mm -hmm. Now I wasn't doing the work anymore. Yeah, they were doing the work. Yeah. Right? So instead of done for you, or I'll make sure you're taken care of. Now it's the now it's the are you going to make sure you're taken care of? Like mm -hmm. I be there to support, but nine hundred ninety seven dollars for something that didn't exist didn't work with my brain, and that mm -hmm. was part of my transformation. I think it's like I think Sam Oven talks about like done with you, done for you, course account, whatever it is, right? Like yeah. that was the next transformation and. And I remember you and I on the phone, I was like, how much should I charge? 497, you're like, do 997. I was like, there's no way anybody, because that was Dan Henry's so like, There's no way someone would pay that. That was like Russell Brunson, like, no way, not gonna happen, right? And fundamentally what broke my brain again was like, nobody really cares how much you're charging. They care about the problem that you are solving, whether or not you can actually get them there and whether or not you'll be there to make sure they're taken care of. Mm -hmm. And like, and that's why people are more than happy to pay you money and more than happy to pay me money. Cause like, I only work on big problems in your business. I'm not gonna charge you $10,000 to set up an email sequence. That's not gonna happen, right? I will charge you a fair amount that will get you three to five times the investment in your business. As long as it's three to five times, I don't hate them and they don't hate me. Like, like if I charge them a thousand bucks, they make a million dollars, I'm like, hmm, right? But if I charge them a thousand bucks and they make five to 10 to 15, that feels kind of okay. Like I'm happy for them, right? Mm -hmm. and so that broke my brain again, which is saying like, I'm going to sell you something that isn't real, but I'm going to make up for it through like, we're going to talk on the phone once a week as a group. And mm -hmm. when you have a problem, I will be there to answer. And sometimes I'll say, you have to go back to the course, but I'll make sure that you aren't left out in the cold like I was. Mm -hmm. um, so that was like the first phase, which is my done for you. And then there's a group coaching or maybe like the course and accountability. But mm -hmm. then there was this thing that was like a whole other level like this, right? <laughs> Like this right here was a um, near emotional trauma. Your right? six month program, right? Correct. And it's at an annual rate, it's $30,000, right? And yep. this broke my brain again because I had gone out on a limb, but I had never pitched. I had seen you do it. I had seen Russell Brunson do it. I'd see Dan Henner do it, but I had never been there, right? And if it wasn't for Steph and you, it would not have happened. Like, I would, I would just drag to my feet and said, yes, I should do it, but I can't because of X, Y, Z, one, two, and three. I'll bet the two of you put probably in like three hours worth of work, right? But I needed that. Like there was no way it could have happened without Jeff, this is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to do it. Steph, just make the reservations. I was like, Steph, don't even talk. Just make the reservations. Here's my card, right? Like I didn't have the brain space for it because I was dealing with the emotional trauma of a $30,000 year program. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is everybody on this call will go through this of like, am I worth it? Is it worth it? Are they comfortable paying me money? Am I deserving of money? Is it gonna work? 
Like all these questions are going to pop into your head. And if you don't verbalize them and write them down and answer them, they will drag down your spirit and your brain will shrink down to your, you know, your daily running average, right? Like if you're trying to go to $30,000 programs and you don't directly answer those five questions, they're going to come down to your 3000 or 2000. If you're trying to sell a $3,000 program, it's going to come down to your 1000 or your 50. You sound trying to sell a hundred dollar program. It's going to come down to your hourly rate that your employers to pay for. Like you have to actively answer those five questions. And when I did, I felt a lot more comfortable talking about it, creating an offer of what I was going to do in exchange for those uh, 15 or $30,000 uh, students. Um, and they all absolutely love it. Like I, I don't know how impactful it's been until I talk to them, but like we have one guy that's like about to sign a power partner and sign 200 clients over the next year. Like, Holy shit. Like what the hell, man? Like, like <laughs> our, our SOPs, our, our Trello boards, our, our uh, high level sequences, like all the automation so that like I can take on a hundred clients over the next six months and not blink an eye. Yeah. Like, holy crap. Like we've got a sales trader that, you know, that I don't know if I can say his name, but like that guy is smart as shit. And, and is, I don't know why he's doing it. Like I can't afford to pay him his rate, but he likes the mission and he genuinely believes that I can help him get there. Great. Let's go. Uh, there's a girl that does Facebook ads that made her, uh, made her client an extra $300,000 over the course of four months. We have somebody that automates follow-up for agencies. We have something that prospects uh, for agencies doing cold email. I think he does on average 1,500 yeses a month. That's 1,500 mm -hmm. businesses that I want to buy what you have to sell, right? Mm -hmm. And all of them came together to support my transformation because they answered those five questions. And here's the weirdest part. When I, had done, when I had done my pitch, which it's not really a pitch. It's more like, here's what I'm doing in exchange for money. If you want to take a next step, let's go. Mm -hmm. I had seen you do it before. Yeah. I had seen Dan Henry do it before. I had seen Russell do it before, but I never saw what happens right after. Ever. Right after, you will have the lowest of the low you've ever been. You will be like about to cry. And I almost did for no reason. I don't know why people were coming up to me and talking to me, but I felt like I'd left everything on the field and failed for no reason. That's just the signal that my brain was giving me. And I don't know why. And later that night, probably like an hour or so later after dinner, I just sat down in the shower. Like I just couldn't deal with like the forced transformation. And I guess it's just like when somebody wins an award that they've always wanted to do, they feel like they've made it, but there's so many emotions. Like I didn't know that what was going on. I just felt like I failed again because that was the only thing that I knew. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, I come back again the next day and say like, by the way, we're going to go over this again. If you want to take a next step, let's do it. And here's what's crazy. Stefan Becker, unknowing to me, interrupted the entire dang thing for 30 minutes, saying, Jeff doesn't know this about me, but, and Steph had made all these slides about how mm -hmm. through my guidance and mentorship, she makes an extra 150, $180,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Becker was talking about how uh, he was out with us during my birthday dinner and couldn't afford, like he had no money and he was gonna not eat and I slipped him money and he remembers that feeling of fear and somebody's gonna make sure I don't fail again. And I remember he and I talked, I was like, Becker, we're, we're never gonna do this again. Like, I know how much it sucks to lose and you are never gonna fail ever again. He's now doing $25,000 a month. Because mm -hmm. of what I helped him get, which was his first $6,000 a month client, he could then afford his next tier program and have confidence to serve people like you. Like, mm -hmm. I remember being at my low. And mm -hmm. I think Becker saw me at my low. And I think Steph saw me at like that emotional low. And yeah. like I, I almost like started bawling after they started talking. Yeah. Then nine people came up and said, I want to pay you real life money for what you got on that screen right there. And I walked off with like all these contracts. And it's you, the weirdest part is like you always have to break your brain. Like you have to fundamentally understand like your brain is only good for surviving, not thriving, not making offers, not building an agency surviving and when you are unsure of what to do your brain will think there's a bear out there will say go back in your cave and just eat cheetos that's how americans live their lives safe mm -hmm. and survive right mm -hmm. if you want to be successful you have to get used to the riskiness of being on an edge and understanding that your brain needs to be broken again and again and again like like i know at my core and this is the strangest thing to say like like elon musk will never be poor ever again neither will any of his kids uh bill gates steve Jobs, whole fucking family the vanderbilt will never be poor ever again They've managed to break their brain over here. Mm -hmm. Once you master Facebook ads, how to craft an offer, how to ask for money, you'll never make less than a half million dollars a year. Garen fucking teat. Yeah. Not going to happen. Russell Brunson could lose everything and be up to $10 million a month in probably like half a year. Right. Yeah. 
like you and I both know we will never be poor or have failure ever again because we went through those journeys and consistently broke our brains. And that was a long winded answer, but I, I hope I phrase in certain ways. So like for everybody watching, like the phase that they are in, like it's going to suck and you have to proactively ask yourself those questions and you're going to get those questions asked by your subconscious brain. If you don't say it out loud, it's going to slow you down. You're going to go back to survival mode and you have to consistently like, break your brain at each step and each stage. Um, and whether you're still at the done for you, you're at the course level or you're at your, you know, your elite program, like you have to consistently break your brain. If you don't, you'll go back to survival mode and you will, you will regret not trying one more time. Dude, totally agree. Dude, yeah. there have been so many times over the past two years where I've hit like a huge low, even though like, I like, for example, after Tribe Buyers Live, like in total, we made over a million dollars from Tribe Buyers Live. And I had the same like, oh, fuck, <laughs> like this is a lot feeling. Um, but if you hadn't stepped up and broken your brain at your mastermind and gotten those people in your program, yep. those people wouldn't may not have gotten those results probably he, wouldn't have gotten those results no here's the interesting part like there was like i i, I coach on your friday calls and it was me okay. and the day before it was brad and the day before it was it was avery or 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 somebody else mm -hmm. and um jc made a post and mm -hmm. we all said derivatives of the same thing which is like careers will be lost if you do not make an offer mm -hmm. people will starve if you do not try to solve their problems like mm -hmm. at the core, I fundamentally believe that. And the weirdest part is that like, like the people in my elite program are already successful, right? They will mm -hmm. not starve, but mm -hmm. they will lose real opportunities if I'm not there or if I don't have the money to pay coaches to be there or if I don't have the money to buy bandwidth in my brain and my schedule for them. Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna happen, mm -hmm. right? The dollar is just an exchange of time and value. That's it. Let's set aside how much they're paying. Could I be there for them? Yes. Will they take it seriously? Yes. Can I carve out an hour of my day for them? Yes. It just so happens that I'm charging a lot of money for it. Mm -hmm. And I've got people, and, and I can't say their names, but they're about to sign, like I mentioned, a power partner that has 200 meal, meal, prep, clint, uh, meal prep companies under him. Mm -hmm. What would happen if this student and I didn't get on a slide deck or get on a call and slide deck out the entire conversation, 45 minutes of scripting, what about this? What about that? What if they said this counterpoint, 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 and ended up being a five minute call for him just like that. Yeah. He would have missed out on that and he would not be paying his mortgage otherwise. Mm -hmm. um, like that happens with like every single person in my elite program. Like there's a guy in Florida, uh, massively successful with a web design agency. He's making a million dollars a year on autopilot. Mm -hmm. Nothing, right. And he's like, I need to build a Facebook ad agency. And I was like, but why? Like you don't have any need for this. You're doing like, $30,000 a month minimum. What does, what's the difference? And he says, I need to build something that my, that my children can understand that I can pass on to them. Mm. If I didn't man up and present an opportunity to help him do that. He'd still have this void in his heart, trying to figure out what to build to pass on to his kids that they can identify with and build together. Right. Mm. That's why he's doing it. Um, mm. And so like realizing at the core, like if you don't make an offer, people will be losing, people will be failing. Remember like the failure thing, right? Like imagine mm -hmm. if the first guy that you and I paid money to that we had a positive relationship with, but he was like, ah, I don't want to do this. I don't want to fail today. Like mm -hmm. you and I would be sitting here, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine if like, like Tony Robbins was like, ah, I don't know if I can do this pitch. And it was like the first one he did, right? Mm -hmm. Like imagine if, you know what I mean, right? Yeah. And so and I hear this all the time. You do sales for people. You don't do sales to people. Like right. you're saying yes to themselves, especially at that price point. People step the fuck up at that price point and cause, cause you're all in, right? Like my, I, I bought into a hundred thousand dollar program last year when I didn't have it. And then this year bought into a $75,000 program every time. Like that's when my business starts to take off because I yep. walking to say yes to myself and yes, a big, uh, a big reason for it is the program. And another big reason is I'm saying yes to myself. Yep. It's like, it's like everyone needs permission from somebody else. Just understand with your brain, like let people give you permission. Like this person is giving me permission to best serve them by spending enough time that they can create a digital product and launch client retention boxes, which is like a huge need. Like 
agencies are struggling because they're losing clients on the fourth month and don't know what to say on the third month. Guess mm -hmm. what? Now I've unlocked and he and I have worked on unlocking the brain bullshit that he has and creating client retention boxes. And for like 97 bucks, you can create your own. People are going to be keeping their clients for an extra two, three, four months and being able to pay their employees because of this. Like, mm -hmm. like once you realize that money is just, it's an easy yes every time. Yeah. Yeah. It's just these little tweaks that make a massive difference, yep. especially with mentorship and coaching. Correct. Um, like you get a lot from courses, but you're also going to need the accountability and the mentorship to get to the next level. Correct. Uh, courses are really like, I'm going to dip my toe in and see if I agree with this. Like the books behind me, those are courses, right? Mm -hmm. so like, like Ryan Levesque's ask method, right? Like mm -hmm. that's more like a, like accountability got me there. Um, I've only read Jay Abraham's book. I can't afford his hundred thousand dollar a day fee. You know what I mean? But like, like the, the course got me there and what happened it is to the next level. That wasn't another course. My brain mm -hmm. thinks it was another course. Oh, I need this course and this course. No, what you really need is accountability to get you there. Like think about the gym. Like it's always the same weights. Like 45 pounds doesn't change whether you're in San Diego or Miami, New York. It's always 45 pounds. Mm -hmm. The reason why you get a better result has nothing to do with the gym. It matters about the people in the gym, whether that you're paying that gym trainer enough to keep you accountable, slap the Taco Bell out of your mouth and drag you out of the gym at four in the fucking morning. So you do two a days. Like, like that's the accountability part, mm -hmm. not the course, but the accountability. And, and that's ultimately why I can be on this call with you and, and why it's moved forward. Cause you give me the accountability and mentorship that I need to be successful. Thanks so much, brother. And, yeah. and the people in the programs too, like surrounding yourself with people that are saying yes to themselves at that level too. You're surrounding yourself with the right people that are growth oriented and not with people that are from Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. Let's bring <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio there. That's my hometown. I can say that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it was weird because like I grew up in, I didn't go to a great school. I went to Florida National University, which is like top 100. Like that's not a thing. Right. And so like my entire career experience at FIU was just get a job paying you seventy five, eighty thousand dollars a year. If you got that, you'd be great. Mm -hmm. I then went to University of Chicago for a summer business scholar program. I don't know how I got in. They let me in. I guess there was an application error. I have no idea. I was literally like the lowest ranked student in the program. Everybody there was trying to figure out how they're going to make a million dollars a month. These kids are like 22 years old. And I was like, what world did I just get dropped into? This yeah. makes no sense. 80 million, what are you, who are you people? And it took like three days for my brain to be acclimated and go through those like five stages of regret. Like, I don't believe it's true. Maybe it is. I don't, you know, whatever those like Maslow's, whatever the fuck. Right. So like mm -hmm. it took me like a couple of days to get reacclimated. And I started using those terms and thinking that way, but only because those people were around me mm -hmm. and it was almost alien to come back home and have mm -hmm. a conversation with somebody that's trying to get a $20 an hour job coming from somebody that's trying to like, make a million dollars a month and scale his software company to a thousand users a day. Like mm -hmm. what just happened? Like, like I got a taste and I came back and everything was bad. Like mm -hmm. I was like dissatisfied with my life. And the weirdest part about all this is like, you don't have to go to Chicago to do that anymore. Like, like this will trigger your brain correctly. Like yeah. the Facebook groups, somebody yelling on a zoom call, like when you're in traffic, listen, just listen to a podcast. You will start changing your view of tribe. And, and what is it like when it's just you, you can hunt an, uh, hunt an antelope, but when it's 30 of you, you can hunt a mammoth. Mm. Same thing. Mm. Yeah. I love that. yeah. I'm always trying to create the new normal for myself. And the easiest way I've found to do that is surround myself with people that are like 10 levels ahead. Yep. And then naturally being in that new environment, like fucking living with Cole Gordon now, like dude's beast. And like just being surrounded with him, there is completely new, new normal. Like I woke up at 5 a.m. today and worked out and like I've been wanting to do that. But it wasn't until somebody moved into my house that was doing that already that I got the fuck up and actually did it. Yep. Um, so it's just all about creating the, the new normal for yourself and surrounding right. yourself with those people. Yeah. You used to have to like move to New York to do that. Like there was a whole generation that like, if I can make it in New York, I can make it anywhere. Right. I have to go to San Francisco to build my career. Like we're going to go West or something like that. Like you don't have to do that anymore. Like you don't have to uproot your whole life. You just have to break your brain and hang out with people that are just ahead of your learning curve. They're going to shorten your learning curve 
tell you what you're doing wrong, tell you what you're doing right, and, and do that like one to 5% change that you need at each level. And you know, then your Stripe has a dot instead of a comma. I love that. That's a new thing. Yeah. That's great. It's like a shirt. Like, does your Stripe have a dot yet? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> well, guys, if you're enjoying this, uh, hit the like, hit the heart. We always love it. The engagement helps, helps it reach more people. I'd really appreciate it. Um, and if you have any questions for Jeff or, or me, uh, drop them down below and we'll get them answered. Um, anything, anything at all, we'll get them answered for you. Um, but uh, you have in, you posted your mastermind this year, which yes. is awesome. Yep. And now 2020, you're going to host uh, AskCon. Yep. Um, so yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. So remember how I mentioned like breaking your brain and the fear, am I good enough? Is it worth it? That will happen at every stage. And that's happening now with ASCON. Like I just have to verbalize it and write it down on the board and all that. Um, Please explain what ASCON is. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> okay. that can be misconstrued. Yeah. Uh, so agency scaling secrets convention, right? So like that's what the, the butt is for, agency scaling secrets, right? But it's, it's, it's proof positive that that you can build an agency and a tribe and not have to be fearful of like, but what about, am I going to get screwed? No, no. Like everybody on stage is going to be real dang good and honest with like their ups and downs, the left and right. So they're not going to try to be the expert in the world or like they're going to, it's not going to be Grant Cardone versus uh, the Wolf of Wall Street guy talking about their jets. Like they're just real life human beings that are just a little bit ahead of your learning curve. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to events. Uh, there are good and bads to them. I've been to masterminds. There's good and bads to them. And what I really want AskCon to be it's like, hey, do you have a webinar problem? Great, we've got a webinar guy and he's doing a breakout session. Um, just like with Tribe of Buyers. Like I thought that that was beautifully run, right? Thanks. And in my brain, I'm still having the same freakouts of what am I gonna say on stage? Is everybody gonna be taken care of? If I decide to present an offer, am I gonna break down in front of everybody all over again, right? It's the same bullshit at every level. Is it worth it? Am I worth it? How am I gonna make sure that they're taking care of like normal stuff? Um, and it's only through like your guidance. And I think Alex Moscow has helped like you transform it. And as a result, like, I'm transforming too. I'm um, in uh, with Steph and we're gonna have 300 people uh, in about five months in South Florida at Agency Scaling Secrets Convention filled with, you know, grandma's paintings and, and funny references to the logo. Um, and it's gonna be pretty dang cool. Um, yeah, it's coming I'm up. I'm I'm stoked to help you set it up too, uh, because it's a it's a whole nother beast going from 30 people to 300 people. Yep. Um, but it's totally worth it. Like, it's it's just part of like the natural brain breaking process. Like, yeah. There's no it's way you're gonna break it. <laughs> I I I feel broken already. Right. Like like the 30 people event broke me as a person and forced me to to reassemble as better and transform. Mm -hmm. Correctly, I feel like you went through the same thing with your first person in person event. Um, when I remember when we did them in the office, which was like the craziest thing. Um, <laughs> and the same thing with like your 300 person event will happen to me too. But here's the weirdest part: like like Elon Musk went on stage and made 11 billion dollars in like 48 hours, right? Like like that wasn't his first time. He mm -hmm. didn't go from zero to 11 billion. He mm -hmm. had little things along the way, and each time he got better at it. And I feel like you went on that that correct journey. We did small events. We did smaller mm -hmm. events, bigger events, mm -hmm. and allowed ourselves to evolve and transform it. And I'm just like, I'm on the same path. And for everybody watching this, like when you do come to AskCon, like it will be weird for me and it'll be weird for you because it's gonna be a collection of real life human beings that you've seen online and you're gonna be talking to them in person. You're like, that's the guy that's doing $10 million. Again, I'm just talking to him, right? Like normal human beings. Uh, like traffic and conversions, like Ty Lopez just walking around, right? Like, his yeah. um, and that's ultimately what the goal for AskCon. Awesome. I love it. And it's in May? Uh, May or June area. We're still like making hotel reservations, um, but there's going to be proper announcements and all that. Uh, I'm going to have people in my elite program uh, be presenting. Uh, Jeff Lopez is like a great example. Uh, he started at zero in the IC. He's now at a $1 million run rate. Wow. Like, sure. holy crap. So he's going to be on stage talking about his power partner process. And that's going to break a lot of brains too. Uh, Steph Simon's going to be on stage talking about Facebook ads that sell expensive stuff. 
not $17 teeth cleanings, right? Mm -hmm. Like Dave Robbins is gonna be on there, Joel Kaplan's gonna be on there, you're gonna be on there, like like people that have consistently moved an industry forward for the better. Mm -hmm. and, and every single person there, I know like they're always gonna have something to sell, I'm totally okay with that, because every single person I just mentioned will make sure that they are taken care of. Mm -hmm. right? Like the people that do decide to bet on them with money. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, so I'm still working on a time and it's gonna be dang cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, I'm stoked for that. Uh, we are out of time here today. I want to thank everybody for being on the live. Jeff, I want to thank you for all the stories. Thanks for all the kind words. Thanks for being an amazing coach inside of Authority Accelerator. And thank you for just like breaking your brain a lot and just leveling up. It's awesome. Thank you for mine. Full circle. Yes. Grandma's nipples. Yeah. Oh, grandma. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. um, yeah so I don't, I don't know if there's like any faq or q a but if there is like andrew mentioned just put it on the thread and i'll be sure to come back tomorrow and answer them the best way i can um yeah dude it's been a pleasure thank you so much man see you guys bye